All right, so I'm doing another leak code problem. Um, this one I, I did solve beforehand. I'm going to explain my solution, but we're, we're going to kind of implement it together so you can kind of learn from this if you're trying to practice for interview questions or just kind of understand how do you solve these programming challenging challenges. So this one's called add two numbers. And it says you're given two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. The digits are stored in reverse order and each of their nodes contain a single digit. Add the two numbers and return the sum as a linked list. You may assume the two numbers do not contain any leading zeros except that the number zero itself. So you got these two linked lists that are kind of reverse numbers and you have to kind of build up a number and add them together, right? So it seems really basic, but the, the, the gotcha or the catch is that these numbers can be up to 100 digits long, right? So this won't fit in a normal number. This won't fit in a normal integer. You're going to go and get some errors if you try to just put them in a, num a number. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind is that you could use something called big int to solve this, right? I mean, there's other ways you could solve this probably, but I think ultimately you need to build up a string that represents your final solution and return that. So that's the approach I'm gonna take. There's probably an easier approach where you build up the new linked list as you add these numbers together um, using some type of carryover. And maybe we could try to do that. Like if you were to take two and five and add them, you'll get back seven. And then you go to six and four, you get back 10, carry over. You might need to like mod it by, um, divide it by 10 or something and like do a carry over. You can do it that way. I'm just gonna do the, the easiest way that comes to mind, which is big int. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a function that's gonna take in one of these linked lists. And if you don't know what a linked list is, it's basically just a node that points to another node that points to another node. And you can traverse this using like a while loop or something if you want to. But I'm going to make a function here called toString, and it's going to take in a list. I'll just call it, uh, actually, I'll pass it node. How about that? And what this is going to do is it needs to return the string representation of this. So 2, 4, 3, I'm going to convert it to a string because I think it would be easier to pass a string into big int than dealing with these linked lists. Again, we're dealing with like 100 max nodes, so it's like not that big of a deal. So I'm going to go ahead and say return node dot val plus and in fact i think these are strings so like let's do some string interpolation here or i think these are numbers so i need i need to, I, need, I might need to do this and then we're going to return this concatenated with um two string of node dot next and anytime you do recursion like you have to make sure you check your base case so i'm going to say if node is undefined, then I'm going to return an empty string. So if we pass in a linked list of zero, it's going to print out zero plus, do the recursive call, this should be undefined, return an empty string. So this function should hopefully work, and what I could do is just run it. So I'll say like list one string is equal to two string of list one. I'll do the same thing with list two string. So that's taking the full linked list and converting it to a string. And remember, these are still in reversed order. So how do you add these things together? Well, we have to basically reverse the string, right? So I'm gonna say split on the empty string. I'll say reverse, and then I'll join it back together. Okay, so that's how you take a, a number that's reversed and you just reverse it, okay? So now we have two numbers, and this should actually represent like three, four, two, and then the other one should represent four, six, five. If you're looking at this example and applying it to this algorithm we're trying to implement, this is list one and this is list two. And now we have to kind of add them together. But like I said, you're going to have like 100 digits in these linked lists. So how do you add them together? Well, the one way you can do is you can use something called big int. So I'm going to say big int of one is equal to new big int, I believe. And I'll pass it that list one string like this. All right. And then we can also say constant big int of two is equal to new big int of list two string. And then I'll say const sum is equal to big int one dot add. Actually, you can just add them together like this, I believe. Like so. This is built into JavaScript, I believe, if I'm doing this correctly. Although it's not called bit int, it's called big int. Now what we could do is just return the sum dot two string. 
And let's just verify this works. I know this is gonna actually fail the test case because we haven't converted it back to a linked list, but let's run the code and make sure that we're on like the right path, All right? So let's run the code real quick. And let's verify that this works. Big int is not a constructor. So I'm gonna go to JavaScript, go to big int. Maybe it's not a constructor. Okay, you just pass it big int. So it's just a function. Um, so, you know, sometimes you forget how stuff works. Instead of saying new there, I'm just going to pass it that, and let's just go ahead and run it again and see what happens. It's actually returning 807, so we've solved the problem, but we just need to convert it back to a linked list because the output that they expect is right here. It says a list node, returns a list node. By the way, this is like JS docs that kind of define like what your JavaScript function takes in returns, and these are the types. So it's very similar to the TypeScript, but not as verbose, where we're saying that this thing needs to return a list node. So we can actually make another function here called like func function to list, and it's going to take in a string. And let's see if we can kind of write this one too. Um, we're going to say if there is nothing left in the string, just return null, I guess. And then we could say return val is equal to string dot Maybe we can do unshift or shift. So get the first character in the string, although I don't know if that's, can you do shift on a string? I might need to do like substring or something. <clears throat> I'll just say care at zero. And that'll get us the first character. And then next is gonna be to list of string dot substring of everything after that first character. Now, I don't know if this is the most performant way, but this is gonna take in a string which I don't know if, sh I don't think string's a, uh, a reserved word or not. I'm just going to change this to str. So that should hopefully return us a linked list of 807. So let's try passing that string like this to our function and see if this works. 708 output is 807. So they expect you to return the output also reversed. Yeah, they, they expect it to be reversed as well. So we have to kind of like reverse the this as well. So I'll say like split dot reverse dot join. And let me clean this up real quick because I'm going to make another function called reverse takes in a string and it's going to do that logic since we're doing this three different places. It makes sense to maybe like pull this out to a helper. So I'll just go ahead and do this. It takes in a string and it reverses it. And we're going to pass that to here. And we're going to pass it to reverse as well. Now again, like there's other ways you can solve this problem. Like I don't think I had to use big int. I could have just like looped through the lists together and return a new lists. But <clears throat> Sometimes you just do like the first thing that comes to mind and if it works, it works. All right, so that's all that test case. Let's make sure this actually works if I submit and make sure that we're passing all the test cases. And it is passing. Um, it says mine is faster than 99.95% of JavaScript, so that's pretty cool. Mine uses more memory than a lot though. So it's kind of a trade-off. You could probably solve this in a different way that might be slower, but use uh, less memory. But yeah, that's how I solved it in my head. Um, and then after you solve it, you can go and look at the discussions and see what other people solved. But this was a pretty cool, pretty cool problem to solve. I think I made it maybe over, overly complex by doing this kind of big end stuff. I think you could potentially just do what I said, like grab the first element of the list, add them together. If it's over 10 or if it's over nine or something, yeah, if it's over 10, then like take the remainder and then like add it onto the next one. Just how we do like, traditional math, like the old way with like adding digits together and doing a carryover. I think that's kind of how they wanted you to do it. But honestly, like sometimes you can just use built-in functions to your programming language that makes stuff a little bit easier to use. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching me solve this, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, whatever. Join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or just ask other people in my community questions about programming. Um, and have a good day and happy coding.